In April of 2019, NVIDIA released the GTX 1650, a card that received pretty bad reviews on release. And in my opinion, it was fair to be harsh on this card. At the time, you could get an RX 578 gigabyte that had double the VRAM, more performance, and cost less, and in fact, was much older and had a die size fairly similar. And that die size matters when you consider that this Turing-based 1650 didn't have any of the RTX features that could maybe help differentiate it from its aging competitor that basically beat it in every way. Uh, honestly, I hated this graphics card when it came out. Well, I at least hated it on desktop. The one claim to fame the 1650 of course had was it used a lot less energy than the 570 that was basically better than it in every single way. Well, that meant then that it was decent on laptop. And in fact, the co-host of Broken Silicon, Dan, has a 1650, or I think actually technically 1650 Ti GDDR6 uh, graphics card in his Asus laptop, and it performs pretty well. In laptop, TU-117 brought almost RX 470 performance to either budget laptops or, if constrained to almost 1050 Ti performance, real thin and lights, ones that before could only fit like an MX250 that was substantially weaker. So it, it wasn't an entirely horrible product in every segment it was used in, but on desktop, it really probably should have been called the GTX 1640 because... Well, that's really what performance class it was. And either way, though, ARC-128 Execution Unit and Navi-24 are going to smoke TU-117, an aging graphics card that was never that great even when it first came out. And so it's well overdue to replace this product. But with what? There is no Ampere GA-108, or what GA-117 even, you might say. And so... Well, you can probably guess what I'm going to suggest it's being replaced by, the graphics card in the title of this video, the RTX 2050. The RTX 2050 is a graphics card that has been baffling a lot of YouTubers and tech commentators. No one can seem to explain it. And in fact, when I reach out to my contacts with at AIBs and people that work with AIBs, everyone is baffled. AIBs did not see this coming and they can't explain it. But as I'm starting to suggest, I think I can. I think there's more that's going on here than just replacing the 1650, and I think I can explain why it's named the way it is, why it's segmented the way it is, and what's going on with the MX570 and MX550. And it speaks to, really, the precarious position NVIDIA's in in low-end laptops. This is actually a pretty defining release that's worth analyzing, and I'm going to do that in a second, but first, an ad from a sponsor. This video is sponsored by Ivacy VPN. Ivacy VPN is a VPN service that offers an ability to view cross-region content specific to whatever country you choose with their easy-to-use app for any streaming service. Whether on Netflix, Hulu, or even Disney+, Plus, over 10 simultaneous devices while maintaining lightning-fast upload and download speeds. It even lets you split internet traffic so that content that isn't risky and needs to stay as fast as possible can go around the VPN. But if everything needs to go through a VPN, and why wouldn't it, security and privacy are important, they have 3,500 plus servers across the globe that make sure you're connected to one close to you so you don't lose much speed anyways. And again, they have 10 multi-login support, secure Wi-Fi, and an internet kill switch to extra protect your privacy. Use the link on screen or in the description to get a special deal on IVC VPN today just for Moore's Law is Dead listeners. And... Tell them I sent you. This really does help the channel. Use Ivacy VPN today. Yeah, as I was saying, everyone online seems to be confused by this announcement of an RTX 2050 next to an MX570 that shares the same GA107 die, actually, and the MX550. And the AIBs in industry contacts I reached out to were just as surprised and baffled by this announcement. They weren't told ahead of time this was coming, and they seem very confused about it as well. Well, I actually do think after reaching out to quite a few people and just really thinking about it in NVIDIA's mindset, I think I can explain what's going on here. And, and the first thing I need to bring up is actually the MX550, a graphics card that should firmly perform in between an MX450 and GTX 1650 Max-Q at under 30 watts. Hmm, what art card does that sound like? Indeed, if you look it up, you'll see that the MX550 uses the full 1024 CUDA cores that TU117 offers. 
This used to be reserved for various 1650 and 1650 Ti SKUs, and then they would disable it partially and send it down to the MX450. Well, the MX450 being replaced by the 550 has the full die, so I am forced to conclude NVIDIA is phasing out the 1650 SKUs. And this makes a lot of sense. You know, some people would point out, well, but the 550 has half of its bus disabled. Yes, now the TU-117 dies are going to be reserved for these super low power, like 10 to 25 watt classes, where frankly, it's running at about half to two thirds the clock speeds anyways. At half to two thirds the clock speed, having half the bandwidth isn't really a big problem, and it's worth it to save space on the motherboard for laptops. So that's what they're doing with full TU-117. And NVIDIA is basically doing the same thing with GA107 for the cards above the MX550. The MX570 is basically just an ampere version of the 550 for more premium competitive versions of MX laptops so that Intel can't just completely wipe the floor with them in that 15 to 25 watt range. That That's all the MX570. 570 is making sure they have an SKU that can get to that low of power with two gigabytes of VRAM. Above that then, finally, the RTX 2050, look up what its power usage is. It's, it's exactly in the class the 1650 Max-Q used to be in. The class TU-117 is being pulled from. That's what the RTX 2050 is. And I am leaking this screenshot for the first time. I'm promising you, ARC-128 is surgically targeting the 1650 Max-Q segment directly. And NVIDIA needs a direct answer. And frankly, not a lot of people want the RTX 3050 or 3050 Ti. It's basically been seen as a worse 1660 that costs more money. If Intel, and I believe they will, gets aggressive in laptop, and most OEMs are saying they will, that they will take laptop market share from NVIDIA, NVIDIA is going to be forced to bring their RTX 3060s down to the pricing class they used to put 3050 Ti's in, and they're going to have to use those 3050 Ti's, well, for the 3050 desktop cards, and now for the RTX 20. That is what's going on. That is why NVIDIA is releasing the RTX 2050 as a replacement for the 1650 to fend off ARC as they move down their laptop product stack because they have to because now they're going to have more competition from not only Intel Alchemist laptop products, but likely a new refreshed RDNA 2 products as well, both Navi 24 and probably 6 nanometer flavors. But then there's still one big elephant in the room. Why the hell? Isn't this called an RTX 3040 instead of an RTX 2050? Well, after speaking to as many contacts as I could get a hold of about this and really just thinking on it for a while, this is, this is what I and my contacts believe overall is what's going on. So the naming for the GTX 1600 series wasn't just because it lacked ray tracing features. NVIDIA wanted the entry-level gaming graphics cards to feel like they were a generation behind the cards everyone else was gaming on. You know, if you'll remember, the 1660 Ti launched with better price performance than the 2060 and the same amount of RAM. You know, they actually were asking a lot more money for just a little bit more performance if you don't consider ray tracing. And that's how NVIDIA wants you to think, though. They want you to feel like you're buying into the latest generation if you're in the latest generation name scheme and they don't want their newest generation this is the second reason to really be associated with low end i would argue 3050 and 50 ti were always low end sku naming schemes but from nvidia's perspective they're more of like the lower mid range they want Ampere to only be 3050 and up. They don't want any RTX capable cards below the 3050 naming scheme, probably until the 4000 series comes out. And then, yeah, they might launch a 3040 so that the people who get the cheapest laptops feel like they're a generation behind the rest of the lineup. That's why they're calling this the 2050. The 1600 series was always meant to be in between the last gen Pascal cards and the MX series, which for most of the time, was based on Pascal and the newer 2000 series 2060 and up. That's just what's going on here as well. The RTX 2050 is in between the 3000 series and the MX series. The only thing that's really weird about it is I almost wonder why they didn't just call it like the 2550 
or something like that. But I don't know. They probably thought that name looked a little weirder and they had never launched a 2050. So this was simpler. This is a scheme that I think NVIDIA is going to keep pulling for many generations after seeing this. That is my explanation for what's going on with these weirdly named MX550, MX570, and RTX 2050. And I must admit that I didn't really say anything online to anyone about it because... At first, I really was confused about what the heck's going on here, just like everyone else was, even NVIDIA's partners. But I do believe I know what's going on. And really, if you were to put it in a single phrase, you would just say, this is NVIDIA's answer to Little Alchemist, right? This is how NVIDIA is going to try to counter that 96 execution unit model that I felt was going to make a mockery of their MX series and the 128 execution unit model that's surgically going to blow the 1650 Max-Q out of the water. They have a 550 that's using the best TU-117 dies and as compact a form factor as possible. And in old nodes, they can make a lot of them to try to stave off market share gains from 96 execution unit arc and they're using a ampere based version for an mx card just so they can have the highest efficiency in that 15 watt class of performance for specific models that need it against the mx versions of a 128 execution unit arc and then well they're probably going to be forced to move their pricing stack down like right now you mostly see 3050s and 3050 ti's and what were rtx 2060 laptops that's probably not going to cut it anymore they're gonna have to move 3060s more often into that sub 1000 dollar category of laptop and so they're kind of moving the 3050s and 3050 ti's down even further and they're gonna have more dies to use for things like an rtx 2050 that will be competing with intel's surgically striked 1650 max q killer that's what's going on that's what makes sense of this it is confusing it is an odd announcement and release from nvidia but it is explainable if you just do a little bit of digging, and that's what I did. And, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's actually one of the last ones that will come out that was recorded before I go on vacation. Don't worry, there is another video coming, and there are more podcasts coming. None of them talk about the RTX 2050 series. I had to get this out before I went on break. But, uh, so, yeah, just know that there's exclusive die shrinks, uh, early ad-free versions of podcasts, and videos coming out to people who support us on Patreon, and there will be content dropping at regular schedule as always while I'm on break because, well, I feel the show must go on and you guys support me and I so I think you deserve to keep having that content while you're traveling or have some downtime this holiday season and I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs>